Let's talk some old school toys, old school G.I. Joes. I had this G.I. Joe Crusader, the space shuttle with an uh, astronaut payload in 1989. I remember that. That was <coughs> Christmas. I guess that was Christmas 89. So I remember that. And um, I got that mixed up with another spaceship that's <coughs> bigger than that. It's another one that's twice as big. But I got it mixed up with another one. So that's another one. I was like, didn't I have that? And I was like, no, I had another one with the. It was a ship inside the little spaceship with the little ship. Yeah, I remember it came with the figure, though. Yo, Joe's space is the place for yep, today's was it. because it's for the 1989 GI Joe Crusader space shuttle. Holy Toledo! Look at that! What makes this particular Crusader special to me is that it was a gift from a friend. Thanks again, Matt. I appreciate it more than words can express. The box is pretty big, even in the hands of a fully grown adult. It features a beautiful depiction of the shuttle orbiting Earth. Yep, that with was it. The doors open, revealing the Avengers the little, the little, the little ship. Artwork by a legendary G.I. Joe box artist, Doug Hart, who, by the way, has just been recalled to active duty by my pal Carson from 3D Joe's to provide card art for the Operation Recall figures. And a look inside the cargo bay. And there's payload version 2 going for a spacewalk secured to the Crusader with the umbilical cord. Original retail price, at this store at least, $32.83. An affordable alternative to everyone who wasn't able to afford the Defiant two years prior in 87. As with many well, of the larger Joe and Cobra vehicles, rather than a... It was called the Defiant. That was the other one. It was <clears throat> like the two spaceships stacked together. But that, yeah, that was way bigger than this thing. But yeah, I still remember this. This was, um... What was that damn store? <clears throat> I know, uh... Dude was picking at it, but that was a classic back like then. Uh, Bradley's. Boy, he went in there and <clears throat> saw that spaceship. That was the roughest thing you've seen back then. Because uh, G.I. Joe and Co., they made some. Those vehicles were huge. They had little ones, but they had with the giant vehicles were crazy. Color photo on the back of the box. There's a black and white and red diagram detailing its play features. Matt also included all the original paperwork. The 89 flip out catalog. Tiger Force was in full force. The Tiger Force, I remember all that. Some other great vehicles showing that there was still plenty of rocket fuel in G.I. Joe's tank as the 90s approached. And what helped set G.I. Joe vehicles apart from all other toy lines, the blueprints. Adding a sense of realism and attention to detail that most other toy vehicles lacked. Plus, Payload's file card, which was a separate cutout included in the box rather than having to snip it out from the back of the box, like with the smaller vehicles. And speaking of paperwork, the Crusader was featured in G.I. Joe's Special Missions issue number 28, which was the final issue of Special Missions. It's featured on the cover, and to get it airborne, it's launched from the Defiant Crawler. Payload, who, unlike the figure, was featured with black hair and a mustache in an earlier issue, is now African American. More than just a scout craft, Slipstream shows that it's not the ship, but the pilot behind the stick that counts and shoots down a condor in the Avenger, saving old what's-his-name's bacon. Payload would have been great at the Top Gun game for NES. He has no issues landing the Crusader on the deck of the flag. And the Crusader has the honor of not only gracing the cover of the final issue of Special Missions, but also the final illustrated page. The Sunbow Show ended by 89, and it never made any appearances on the Deke series, but the Crusader was animated for a few seconds in the commercial for Special Missions number 28. Will the Crusader stop the Condor find out in Marvel Comics? The Crusader, a repaint and retool of the shuttle that was included with the 87 Defiant Space Shuttle Complex, included a repaint of the Defiance pilot. Payload version 2 included the same helmet and backpack, but had a different color scheme. Mm. The info on the file card was identical to the one that was included. I remember with that the figure. Mm. Code name, Payload, Astronaut. File name, Morgan Mark yeah. Jr. Primary... Yeah, the memory's coming back because, remember, um, he had that giant backpack thing and <clears throat> the yellow helmet and the, remo the removable helmet. Remember that, that was, uh, yeah, Christmas of 89. Boy, those... Who oh, you wish those Christmases was hell? And I remember the Christmases, um... Um... Actually, he was like, uh... What the hell did... 
Where the hell the toys at? So opening up the clothing box. How about wrapping the the uh the toys in with the clothes? <laughs> So you have no choice but open open it up because back then you didn't give a damn about no clothes. You want to where the hell the toys at? You know you want to get you, you didn't care about no new shirt. You know, that was it was something else. Military specialty astronaut. Secondary military specialty fixed wing pilot. Birthplace Cape Canaveral, Florida. Grade 06 Colonel. Payload grew up watching the early space shots blasting off through the Florida sky. He stared through the hurricane fence and rode that flaming booster in his dreams. But unlike others, he worked on making that dream a reality by joining the Air Force. He flew F-4 Phantoms over Southeast Asia for three tours, just paying his dues, and upon his return stateside, signed up for the astronaut training program. And the quote reads, Here's a guy who has spent most of his waking hours working on getting himself into space. Sometimes, as he's executing a complicated maneuver in free fall or when he's cutting in his boosters, he seems to be chanting softly under his breath. If you turn up the volume on the ship-to-ship -ship channel and listen very carefully, you can hear him quite clearly. Vroom, vroom. The helmet featured a clear visor and snapped securely in place. And the backpack featured a pair of movable arms, which his hands could grab onto. No clearance issues in the cockpit, figures could easily fit in any of the three seats. And the front seat had control sticks on either side that the pilot could hold on to. Fitted for space duty and an astronaut team with the right stuff. Space isn't for everyone. <laughs> Only those with nerves of steel and guts of titanium can withstand the physical rigors of the trip. Oh, this ain't for me. For this mission, I've selected Roadblock and Flash. No seat belts required here. Like on Star Trek, the crew simply needs to hold on to instrumentation panels if there's any. There was another space figure, but um, space. Only I don't know if it survive. came in a vehicle or not. No offense. I'll stay on Earth and settle for weaker. Unlike on the Defiant, the Crusader's cockpit cover is a removable piece which clips in place to seal it. This bird has plenty of boost in the back to get into space. All it needs is the right angle. So like in the Special Missions comic, we'll need to enlist the help of the Defiant Crawler for the launch. To get it ready, the three landing... That was the other... Uh, the space. That thing was huge. The Defiant Shuttle has a metal bar underneath the front that secures to the booster. But this piece was omitted from the Crusader. It just has a black plastic panel in its place. So although the Crusader can still secure to the bottom of the booster on these pair of hooks, just like the Defiant Shuttle can, the lack of metal bar means it can't secure at the top. It can still rest against the booster, but extra care should be taken when moving the gantry around. That is, if you're even able to move the gantry. It takes quite a bit of muscle to transport this thing. The other exterior differences are aesthetic. Different mm. colored booster jets, fins, cargo bay doors, canopy cover, and windows. I've just received... So this one... The single piece was cheaper because that was the other one. So that that price that was probably fifty sixty dollars that thing because I think I seen a box <coughs> a box cover and it uh, came with two figures. So that other one was uh, hey boy spaces probably word that there's a down satellite in orbit. So let's finish the rest of this review live and direct from space. Prepare for launch. Start the countdown. Green. Two. One. We have ignition. Go, you turtle jumpers! What about that? With the sound effects. I mean, with the uh, video effects, or whatever. The black exterior goes really nicely with the black and white of space and stars. This is a maintenance mission, but if Cobra decides to show up and start trouble, the Crusader is armed with a pair of retractable cannons on either side. It may look a lot like the Defiant shuttle, but what's inside is quite different. I'll check out the cargo bay. Instead of the Defiant's ultra-fragile robotic arm, the Crusader houses the Avenger Scout Craft. Oh, brilliant! It's a recolor of the Cobra Night Raven's drone, 
so it's unfortunately ill-fitted for most spacesuit-wearing Joes. If the awesome power of Roadblock isn't able to wedge someone into there, chances are we won't have much luck either. <laughs> Luckily, it looks like we had a stowaway the night in case he snuck aboard in the crapper. With his more lithe build, he's able to just narrowly fit inside the... Oh, that's, that's the figure I, I was talking about. Yeah, suit, him. More like a spacesuit than a jet flight suit anyways. The Avenger is also equipped with a pair of cannons to provide cover if the Crusader comes under attack. Like the Defiant shuttle, the Crusader also has so a night raven repaint that little um, providing access whatever. to the Defiant booster in space station mode, or another entry and exit point from the Crusader for spacewalks. The cargo bay also has a port to connect an umbilical cord, which can attach to Payload's backpack. This is what zero gravity is like. Your stomach and your mouth trade places, and your brain is <laughs> full of that. soggy cotton. Many of these original umbilical cords place. ended up breaking since it was just a copper wire with plastic sheath. But luckily, some 10 gauge electrical wire from Home Depot will do the trick, with a bit of tape or glue on the ends to tighten up the connection. The originally included umbilical cord was about 13 inches long. Mm. Okay, now for the mission. Colonel, we've spotted the down satellite. Retrieve and repair. <laughs> Roger. Is that a transformer? I'm sick of hearing about Roger. That's good. Nice and easy. It is. That's a transformer. I don't know who that is. But you should be as good as new after guzzling down an energon cube. Hey! I got control back! Alright! Well done, Joes. Contact with the satellite has been re-established. Stop the Avenger and head home. Have a safe journey, Joes. Godspeed. Yeah, that's um, <clears throat> that was good. Like those GI Joes, cause I went and tried to look up some more on um, how long they lasted. I'm talking about the O-ring figures, them things lasted into the early 2000s. Then they brought back the O-ring, and I guess the 2010 is that's when they stopped with the O-rings. I did not know that they lasted that damn long. I know they had them in the 90s, but I know they was in the early 2000s. But they were um making weird figs by that point. It's like kind of like um <clears throat> with the X-Men. Um, wasn't the same like the early 90s, but yeah. Um, damn, I didn't know they was around that damn long. A lot of the, a lot of the stuff I seen pictures like a lot of them was um. Reef paints, but because you was a fan of G.I. Joe's, you, you bought it, you didn't care, you got them anyway. Like, you know, the Tiger Force figures repaint, but you still got them anyway. And the Tiger Force, Python Patrol, and Slaughter's Marauders. So I don't know if they brought that back yet for the classified version. They probably are. Pro <coughs> it's, it's happening eventually. But yeah, that was, um, that was some shit there. Christmas of 89. I remember that. I was like, whoa, that box was like this. It was, <clears throat> it was rough. <clears throat> Coming out of there, it was, uh, opening up, that was the big package. She said, That's what she said. How about that? But uh, <laughs> that was, that was a damn classic. But I knew that there was another one because I was like, I saw that spaceship. Someone's like, didn't I have that? I was like, I thought I did. No, but it was, I had the other version. So I know there was two of them. But I knew it looked different. Yeah, but I had a uh, <clears throat> the Crusader. I didn't have the other one, the uh, Defiant. But yeah, because I remember it came with one figure and a little ship inside. So, but still, they're both <clears throat> both classics. <clears throat>